today and made their way outside of the uh, building where they uh, have been preparing for this mission. Uh, they were allowed to sleep till about 1 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern Time, and then they were awakened, put on their orange flight suits, and made their way out to their pad. Uh, right now, they are all strapped in. They are making preparations to close the hatch. They have gone through their communications checks for the last uh, uh, half hour or so, and they are taking a look at uh, a problem with the replenishment valve that uh, keeps the oxygen in. CNN's John Zarella joins us now uh, from the Kennedy Space Center. John, uh, how serious is that problem? Tom, right now NASA officials say it's not really serious at all. There is a red team out at the launch pad right now, and what they are planning to do in the next few minutes is to just, uh, just to tighten down a valve. You can see the live pictures there of the team working uh, on the mobile launch platform. It's not a problem with the vehicle, uh, itself or with the uh, the main engines or any of the, the hardware of the shuttle, it is a leak somewhere, a very, very small leak of liquid oxygen. Of course, it is liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen that is recirculated through the vehicle, and uh, that is what, of course, provides uh, the power for the main engines. But uh, it does not appear to be a serious problem. They're going to try and just tighten down that valve and then go about the business of the launch. The only other concern would be weather, but that's not a concern at all. Just a few minutes ago, Air Force meteorologists came by and said that uh, right now they have a 100% chance, and I don't think I've ever heard that before. Usually they leave it at about 95%, but a 100% chance of acceptable weather for liftoff at 6.31 p.m. Eastern time. So other than the one minor glitch, Tom, it appears that everything is going smoothly for this second attempt. John, the weather may be 100%, but we still have that red team that is out there. Uh, the longer they work uh, on fixing this leak, they have to clear and come back three miles uh, away from the pad before uh, they can continue. Are they going to be able to clear the pad, do you think, uh, in time? They still have enough, uh, enough pad time where they can get off of the pad without, uh, without delaying the launch, but we've got a couple-hour launch window, and it's not expected that the weather is going to change markedly here this evening. So doesn't look like there will be a problem getting off the ground tonight, probably on time. All right, CNN's John Zarella, thank you very much. We, of course, will have live coverage here on CNN of the launch. As you uh, see, they're starting to close out the hatch. The launch is at 6.31 Eastern Time, 23.31 GMT, and as they begin a 10-day mission, uh, at one time this was a classified mission, but it has been unclassified. They will be launching a Defense Department satellite uh, several hours after liftoff. We, of course, will have complete coverage throughout the Atlantis mission. We're then expected to bring the replenishment back up to full level. Uh, CNN's John Zarella joins us now from the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, John, uh, any idea on how long this hole may be? Well, Tom, what they've done is they've taken the clock down to the T-minus nine-minute mark, and as soon as they're confident that they have the right levels of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen and that the uh, vehicle is topped off and pressurized to the right levels, They'll pick up the countdown once again. Uh, no exact time. They said the delay would probably be around 10 minutes. Not expecting it to be much longer than that, but we are standing by just to wait and see. Tom? At 36 minutes past the hour, they have what they call a, a collision avoidance. They, have, uh, they can't launch at that exact time, so they have to work around a few things uh, once they come off the 31. That's correct. The only thing they're going to, they won't have to worry about working around is the weather here. The weather is absolutely picture perfect. Uh, beautiful night sky. It ought to be one spectacular view up and down the east coast when the uh, the shuttle does get off the ground this evening. Tom? All right, they in the control room are now resetting their clocks and trying to get uh, an exact time when they're going to be launching uh, this mission of the space shuttle Atlantis. Again, not a serious problem, just simply topping off the fuel tanks with the replenishment uh, so that they can schedule the liftoff uh, within the exact second that they want to go. So again, they are working. It's not a serious problem, but one that's going to move the clock back a little bit. We, of course, will have the live liftoff of Atlantis from the Kennedy Space Center here on CNN. Make sure you stay with us in just a few moments. Uh, probably within 10 minutes, they will be launching the space shuttle. We'll be back in just a moment. Bling process. Officials say the wait could have put the shuttle in the path of another orbiting spacecraft, so of course a delay was needed. The six astronauts staffing the mission have been waiting inside the shuttle now for about two and a half hours. They'll stay in space ten days, deploying a missile warning satellite for the Pentagon just after launch. Problems with the satellite's booster rocket, of course, have delayed the mission five days. Forecasters had given a 90% chance of clear skies for the launch tonight, NASA's final of the year. Of course, we'll bring you live coverage of the shuttle launch. As soon as it happens, the best guess is about 14 minutes from now. Because of a problem in the refueling process. I understand. Thank you. 
The 10-day mission is for the Pentagon. Among other things, the crew will deploy a missile warning satellite and observe maneuvers on the ground from various troops. 34 missions so far. Uh, Atlantis is making its 10th flight since its maiden voyage all the way back in 1985. The primary objective of this mission is the deployment of a $300 million defense support satellite that will be sent out into orbit from the cargo bay about six hours or so after the launch. And they are uh, not really experiencing any problems outside of one minor little glitch where they had a small minor leak of the oxygen replenishment. Uh, CNN's John Zarella is at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, John, the uh, clock seems to be working well tonight. That's right, Tom, and it ought to be one spectacular liftoff. It is an absolutely picture-perfect night, uh, to use the cliché, up and down the east coast of the United States uh, for several hundred miles. We ought to get a really good look at uh, Atlantis as it uh, rockets into space. It's kind of interesting, Tom. This is uh, going to be the end of an era, actually, for NASA. This is the last flight of 91, and talking to many of the NASA officials the last few weeks, they tell us that in the years ahead, 92 is going to be a turning point. Uh, less manpower, less money, a streamlined shuttle program, yet uh, four orbiters and more flights. We're going to be seeing a different space program in the years ahead uh, as they try to streamline. Uh, now, some five years after the accident uh, that, of course, destroyed Challenger, they think that they can do away with much of the paperwork uh, and redundancy that uh, they had built into the program. So uh, this uh, certainly is going to be an interesting night here at the Kennedy Space Center, Tom. Most definitely is, and uh, we should point out this is the sixth launch and the final one uh, of 1991. Uh, uh, they will go into a, a long Christmas holiday. The, uh, you can see here, this is uh, the control room at the Kennedy Space Center where they are watching uh, a lot of gauges and dials, uh, making sure that all pressure remains up. Uh, the auxiliary power units uh, started five minutes before uh, scheduled liftoff. They do have uh, about four extra minutes to play with there should there be a problem in the last uh, 30 seconds or so. They can, uh, they can hold it and continue on. They're coming up now on one minute in this, uh, what was once a secret mission, a military mission. Uh, normally, uh, when the clock started at nine minutes, uh, that is when they used to allow us to uh, know when things were going on. They are now under one minute. Uh, let's listen in now at the Kennedy Space Center. That will help suppress the sound energy and the shock of the 7 million pounds of thrust produced at launch. T-minus 40 seconds and counting. T-minus 31 seconds. We have a go for auto sequence start. Atlantis's four redundant computers have primary control of critical functions. T minus 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. We have a go for engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Liftoff of Atlantis and the six man crew on a Department of Defense flight. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling, and Lance is completely rolling over to the proper position for its climb to a 28.5 degree inclination orbit. Three main engines now throttling back to 70% as Atlantis prepares to pass through the area of maximum aerodynamic pressure. speed is now 1,000 miles an hour, altitude 34,000 feet, downrange from Kennedy Space Center, four nautical miles. Atlantis, Houston, go with throttle up. Roger, go with throttle up. Three engines now back, operating at 104% of rated capacity. Good hydraulic systems, good electrical systems.
Atlantis, Houston, com check, UHF only. Loud and clear, John. You're loud and clear also. Altitude now 127,000 feet. Atlantis speed 2,725 miles an hour. Downrange from Kennedy Space Center, 25 nautical miles. Roger. Good Nikos. Three engines continuing to operate well at 104% of rated capacity. Good hydraulic systems, good electrical systems. Altitude now 198,000 feet. Velocity 3,068 miles an hour. Two engine band jewel. Roger, and performance nominal. Nominal. Those calls indicate Atlantis's performance so far has been as planned, and that Atlantis could now perform a transatlantic landing at Banjul, the Gambia, on only two engines if one were to fail. However, that, however, all three engines continuing to operate well at 104 percent. Atlantis altitude is 286,000 feet. Velocity now 4,200. Atlantis 286,000 feet. The white dot you see in the center of your screen is the orbiter by itself, propelled by its three main engines that is, as it is heading towards orbit. The solid rocket boosters have already fallen away harmlessly and are on their way down to the Atlantic Ocean where they will be retrieved. Uh, once again, it was only the seventh time that they had ever launched at night, and it was indeed spectacular. CNN's John Zarella is at the Kennedy Space Center, and uh, it lit up the entire area as the SRBs ignited, John. It certainly did. It's, it provides quite a glow. We probably wouldn't have needed lights out here to do these live stand-ups uh, when Atlantis uh, lifted off, and you can still see it out there. It's a, a dot in the sky heading east and... Uh, and south of us here, I'm sure, particularly down around the South Florida area, they had a tremendous view of the uh, the shuttle lifting off this evening. It uh, it went like clockwork just about all day, except for that one minor glitch that they had with the uh, liquid oxygen replenishment valve. Other than that, uh, the problem that they had last week with the navigational system on the booster rocket, which is attached uh, to the cargo, to that satellite which is in the cargo bay, that was all sorted out, no problems at all with that. So uh, tonight's liftoff with the uh, six-man crew on this 10-day Defense Department mission uh, on the way, Tom. John, it's pretty amazing when you look at this picture of the long-range tracking cameras that, uh, that you can still see that bright dot in the center of your screen uh, that uh, there were some clouds at about 22,000 feet, but uh, they seem to be not hampering this night launch at all. I can't remember a night launch where it wouldn't be by hidden behind the clouds by now. Yeah, it was absolutely crystal clear here, except for those few little puffs of clouds that you mentioned, and uh, makes you uh, wish that all the launches were at night. Uh, you certainly don't get a, as good a view of the shuttle for as long a period of time as you do tonight. I think it's just about out of sight now. Uh, but it was absolutely fabulous. Tom. All right, John. For uh, those, because it did slide a little bit, for someone who may have joined us a little late because uh, they started the clock a little bit late, we're going to show you uh, from the launch pad again at 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, Atlantis on its way to a 10-day military mission, a mission that started when the solid rocket boosters lit, One, lift off of set Atlantis. the sky on fire. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling. Atlantis is completely rolling over to the proper position for its climb to a 28.5 degree inclination orbit.
Three main engines now throttling back to 70% as Atlantis prepares to pass through the area of maximum aerodynamic pressure. So the space shuttle Atlantis has left the pad and is heading towards a 10-day mission. In about six hours, they will be deploying a Defense Department satellite that looks for, uh, sat for uh, plumes of rockets uh, over the...